Hello, everyone. My name is Luke Dewanzik. I'm a PhD student in music at the University of California, Berkeley, where I work closely with CINMAT, the Center for New Music and Audio Technologies. Today, I'll be discussing our paper titled Source Separation Methods for Computer-Assisted Orchestration. First, I'll discuss computer-assisted orchestration and source separation individually, and then I'll go into detail about our research into using source separation as a pre-processing step for computer-assisted orchestration. So let's begin with defining computer-assisted orchestration. In target-based computer-assisted orchestration, the input is an arbitrary sound file, which we call the target sound. The output is an orchestral score, which could be synth synthesized into audio. The process of computer-assisted orchestration is determining which instruments playing which notes would best recreate the target sound. The current state of the art for computer-assisted orchestration is the Orchidea tool, which is the latest generation of the ORCID line of software developed at EarCam. In this paper, we use Orchidea to perform all of our orchestrations. And the output we use is not the score, but the synthesized audio, which is made of recordings of orchestral instruments from the Orchidea Soul dataset. Orchidea is capable of both static and dynamic orchestrations. In static orchestration, the target is harmonically averaged over time, and a single onset of notes, which could be thought of as a single chord, is generated as the entire orchestration. In contrast, dynamic orchestration is capable of recreating the temporal evolution of the target and generating multiple onsets of notes in a single orchestration. In this paper, we perform only static orchestrations, which I'll touch on later. Sound source separation is the process of separating a single sound file into its constituent sound source sounds. In our paper, we use two different types of source separation methods, musical source separation and universal sound separation. The difference is that in musical source separation, the input is expected to be music, whereas in universal sound separation, the input can be any type of audio. In music source separation, a common task is to separate a mixed track back into its stems, for example, a method could attempt to separate a pop song into four source sounds of vocals, drums, bass, and other, where other could be another instrument such as keyboard or guitar. In universal sound separation, the user can specify the number of sources they wish to separate, but the sources do not fit into the same categories since they aren't expected to be musical sources. Now that we've covered computer-assisted orchestration and source separation, I'll explain our hypothesis and the motivation behind this work. When you have a target sound that consists of multiple sound sources that overlap in time, Orchidea cannot distinguish between the two sources and attempts to orchestrate them together. This leads to an orchestration in which the whole orchestra suddenly shifts back and forth between sources, instead of orchestrating both as separate layers. Another issue arises when you perform dynamic orchestration and are dealing with time segmentation. Consider a target comprised of two sounds. Sound A is a continuous sound that doesn't change over the course of the target, and sound B has many onsets and changes in pitch. Without separation, every time sound B changes, a new onset will be generated for the entire orchestration, cutting up sound A into many small chunks instead of a continuous drone. However, if separation is first performed and the two sounds were orchestrated separately, Sound A could be orchestrated with a single onset of notes at the beginning of the orchestration, and sound B could have as many onsets as needed any time a new note or pitch occurs. Following these examples, our hypothesis is that applying source separation as a pre-processing step to computer-assisted orchestration will improve the quality of orchestrations when the target is a multi-layered sound. To test our hypothesis, we designed an experiment with two main steps. First, a target sound is orchestrated with Orchidea without any separation performed. We call this the full target orchestration, and it's our baseline to compare against. Next, we take the same target, but first apply a source separation method, which splits the target into four subtargets. Each subtarget is then input to Orchidea with a subset of the orchestra. These orchestrations are then combined to play simultaneously, creating the separated orchestration. We can then compare the quality of the full target orchestration to the separated orchestration to determine if source separation improves orchestration. To perform this experiment, we created 300 target sounds, where each target sound is a combination of four source sounds. These are drawn from a hand-picked collection of 90 source sounds. The targets are generated to have sources overlap in time. And the source sounds were chosen to fit the following criteria. 
One, we show static sounds that do not have significant harmonic change over time. And two, sounds that have some pitched content and are not only noise. The sounds we chose include alarms, bells, engine noises, field recordings, synthesizer chords, sound effects, and more. The reason we choose static sounds is that in our experiments, we perform only static orchestrations. The reason for this is that we wish to disentangle the two difficult problems of source separation and time segmentation, and time segmentation occurs in dynamic orchestration. By only performing static orchestrations, we reduce the complexity of the problem and can better observe the effects of source separation. Our second criteria exists because orchestrating target sounds that are only noise is not meaningful. The result of orchestrating noise is essentially a random selection of pitches and instruments, which make it difficult to compare the accuracies of the orchestrations. In our experiment, we tested multiple sound source separation methods. The musical source separation methods we tested were open unmix, dmux, and conv tasnet, which are all supervised deep learning models. Open unmix is a bidirectional LSTM network, and dmux and conv tasnet both employ encoder decoder architectures. For universal sound separation, we use TDCN, which is a modified version of conv tasnet, trained for general sound separation instead of music source separation. The one unsupervised method we tested was non-negative matrix factorization, NMF. We choose to test both musical and universal sound separation methods because the type of targets commonly used with Orchidea are often sounds that are not strictly musical. For these targets, universal sound separation seems appropriate. However, we wanted to also experiment with musical source separation techniques because of their accuracy, availability, and the diversity of models that exist. The main method we use to evaluate our experiments is by comparing the orchestration after separation with the orchestration of the full target when no separation occurs. However, we also evaluated the separations themselves before orchestration. This separation evaluation is done through calculating the cosine distance between the estimated sources and the target sound. This distance is computed on the normalized magnitude spectrum of the sounds. This gives us a measurement of the quality of the separations for each method before we perform orchestrations and allows us to examine the relationship between the quality of the separation and the quality of the resulting orchestration. We determine the quality of an orchestration by calculating the spectral distance between the target sound and the orchestration. This distance metric is used in Orchidea as part of the cost function used during optimization. The equation you see takes in the normalized magnitude spectrum of the target x and of the solution x tilde, the orchestration. Then for each bin k of the spectrum, it calculates the absolute difference between the amplitudes. The differing values of lambda 1 and lambda 2 allow the metric to penalize the solution in different ways. When lambda 1 is high, the solution is penalized for undershooting the harmonic energy of a given bin. When lambda 2 is high, the solution is penalized for overshooting the energy of a given bin. We use values lambda 1 equal to 0 0.5 and lambda 2 equal to 10. This penalizes a solution that overshoots the harmonic energy of the target. To compare the full target orchestration to the separated orchestration, we calculate the spectral distance between the target and the full target orchestration, and then we calculate the distance between the target and the separated target orchestration. If the distance between the target and separated orchestration is lower than the distance between the target and full target orchestration, then we can conclude that performing separation improved the orchestration. The table of our results shows the separation evaluation and orchestration evaluation averaged across 300 targets. The last row shows that the full target distance, which is the distance between target and orchestration without separation performed, is the worst with an average distance of 9.24. We find that NMF performs the best in terms of both separation and orchestration. It has the lowest cosine distance for the separation evaluation, and it has the lowest spectral distance for the orchestration evaluation, showing a 39% decrease in spectral distance compared to the full target orchestration. The results show that performing source separation followed by a static orchestration of each individual subtarget improves the orchestration in all the methods we tested. Furthermore, when comparing the results between the separation evaluation and orchestration evaluation, 
we find that as the quality of the separation increases, so does the quality of the orchestration. As you can see, the relative rankings between each method are exactly the same when evaluating separation and orchestration. TDCN++ has the worst values in terms of separation evaluation and orchestration evaluation. NMF has the best. Now we'll listen to two example targets and compare the full target orchestration to the separated orchestration for each target. Here's our first target sound. Here's the full target orchestration, which is the orchestration when no separation is performed. And now we can compare that to the separated orchestration, which was separated using DMUX. Notice how the separator orchestration includes the tremolo and the strings to better match the noisy nature of the target. This was missing in the full target orchestration. Now we'll listen to the target sound of our second example. Here's the full target orchestration. In the separated orchestration. Notice how the separated orchestration does a much better job of matching the pitch material of all the sources compared to the full target orchestration, especially the source sound we hear in the middle of the target. In our paper, we address the potential of using source separation as a pre-processing step for computer-assisted orchestration. Our hypothesis is that separating a multi-layered sound, then orchestrating the individual layers and recombining them, should result in an orchestration that better matches the timbre of the target. Our data confirms our hypothesis. All of the separation methods tested improve the resulting orchestration. Furthermore, there's a correlation between the effectiveness of the separation and the quality of the orchestration. As the separation improves, so does the orchestration. A surprising result is the difference in accuracy for the two universal source separation methods, NMF and TDCN++. For both the separation evaluation and the orchestration evaluation, NMF performed the best out of all methods and TDCN++ performed the worst. However, we expect universal source separation to fit our problem better than music source separation, since our targets contain many non-musical sounds. However, our data suggests that the aspect of the separation method that affects orchestration is not whether it's a universal or music source separation method, but whether or not it's a supervised or unsupervised method. An interesting avenue for future work is to train a supervised model on data that better fits our problem and compare its performance to NMF. Thank you for listening to our presentation today. Feel free to reach out over email if you have any questions or follow up.